see Virgil Look at that. Ortiz throw a punch in that situation. That, to me, was residual. He is having a hard time, Michael Kinson. McKinson, look, 22-1. and one. His first loss was last night against um, Virgil Ortiz. And look, that body is jelly. Look, ooh, you saw the right hook to the body? That's what he's running from right there. And they threw in the towel. Damn, he is fucked up. But, you know, he had the wrong game plan. He was trying to go out there and, um, well, the beginning, the, the early round, he limping. I wonder what happened. No matter, he still was, you know, getting sent to hell. But um, he was doing good the first couple of rounds, you know, trying to box, trying to use that movement. But then at the end of the day, toward those middle rounds, you know, when the fight, you know, before the fight got stopped, he was trying to sit in the pocket and engage. You know, now very confident fighter, you know, but at the end of the day, what sticks out to you looking at that box wreck? It's those two KOs. You know, he's not known to be a guy with power or a guy with knockout punch. And and you you were you were seeing, you know, it in there in the ring. His shots are like kind of pushing. And at the end of the day, he was going in there with a guy who has a 100 percent knockout ratio. Crazy. 24 year old Virgil Ortiz now 19 and 0 with 19 KOs. The like, dude is good. He's had some layoffs. Um, you know, one was, um, um, COVID related, you know, but for the most part, you know, he did have two fights in 2021. This fight with Michael Mark McKinson was supposed to happen last year. He said on the media call early this week that he would, you know, want to fight four times a year. That's realistic. But he said, hell, five times if he want. But we know how it is in his day and age with, you know, networks and broadcasters. You know, we're in a fucked up age in boxing for real, for real. It may be somewhat of the golden. I can't, you can't really say it's the golden age because the best aren't fighting the best. We are in the golden age of broadcasting where you're able to watch and find these fights everywhere. But at the end of the day, the next topic I'm going to be talking about is the fact that like, bro, we're waiting for Spence versus Crawford to get done. I'm confident that it's going to get done. You know, whatever you've been hearing online from YouTubers, nobody knows what they're talking about. You know why? Is because the fighters, you know, Steven Espinosa, Showtime um, executive, he runs Showtime Sports. He's already talked about how, look, he could not get up. About how, you know, it's good that the fighters are not talking about it in the media. So something's going on. You know, but me, I already told you guys, I'm not going to be one of them channels that's going to be doing fucking Spence Crawford every day to fucking buy cereal and shit. That's pretty much what's going on. You know, people living off of it. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it. It's YouTubers that cover the same content and topics every single day, like Johnny Depp and all kind of shit. I'm not saying nothing's wrong with it. But in the case of this fight and in boxing, nobody knows what the fuck is going on. It's all bullshit. You know, oh, this person said this or responded to this. This person said that. I guess let me not be too long winded. The point I'm trying to make is if they don't get some shit done, then one of these sanctioning bodies got to get off of their asses and be like, y'all get something done or you're going to fight your mandatory boots or it's going to be um, uh, Virgil Ortiz. But at the end of the day, time comes to you. 27 seconds until round number nine. As the blue corner calls a halt to this contest, to the winner by TKO and still the WBO International Welterweight Champion from Grand Perry, Texas, the phenomenal Virgil Ortiz So Ortiz Jr. shines bright. But see, this was a blessing in disguise for Golden Boy because, you know, they just said, oh, shit. You know, he's supposed to fight McKinson back in, what, April or so? He couldn't fight him? Oh, yeah, let's run it back. You know, so therefore, you know, they, was able to fill a, they were able to fill a date and, you know, um, um, have him look good in a fight that, you know, he won via ninth round knockout. But now... You know, it's time to really start stepping up. Like, for example, look where he's ranked by the sanction and bodies between him and Boots. You know, and I'm going to talk about it. You got Virgil Ortiz ranked number one by the WBC. Now, remember, just because you're ranked number one does not mean you're the mandatory. Unless I'm pretty sure it's for the IBF. You know, Boots is the mandatory from my understanding, right? But basically, was, was, was his last fight, was that a, was that a final eliminator? Hold on, let me check. Was that a final eliminator?
Let me see something. So I apologize. Something's going on with my colors and all kind of like my lighting and everything. Shit is all kind of fucked up. And also I'm on a uh, 2,500 calorie a day meal plan and I'm about to head to the gym. I just got finished taking. Look, I'm on I'm on snack and I got my uh, my pre-workout mix upstairs. Your harshest critic. What did you think of your performance? Uh, honestly, in the first how many rounds did we go? Nine? Like the first seven rounds, I really didn't do anything good. Um, I had to adjust, had to adjust big time. Uh, I should have listened to my corner from the beginning, but uh, I listened and we got it done. How much did the year off impact you in this fight? Um, I mean, it didn't impact me too much. And you know, if you know me, I'm always in the ring. I'm working hard 24 uh, seven. In two weeks, three weeks, I'll be back in the gym. I'll be running tomorrow, I don't care. Michael McKinson, throughout his career, has been a fighter difficult to hit. He's a slick fighter out there. How long did it take you to kind of figure him out? I felt like I figured him out in the first round, and I just went away from it. Um, my uh, corner had the, the game plan laid out on me. Uh, my dad bitched me out for like three or four rounds in the corner, uh, and I finally started listening to him, and that's when we got him out of there. So why weren't you listening to your corner after those first few rounds? You think you know everything, and you don't. Take me into that eighth round where you put Mikey down for the first time with the body shot. Was that something you were looking for throughout? Um, we knew the body was going to slow him down. Uh, that one didn't particularly feel that hard, but honestly, when I stopped trying to go for it, that's when everything started falling into place. Was this a shot? I think we're going to show it up here on the screen. Was that something that you saw him being open to? Let me see it first. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that body shot, uh, it... It was, it was gonna work all day, it's just, it does. This is your first fight with Manny Robles in your corner. Your father's been your trainer for a long time throughout your career, but what kind of difference did it make working with Manny in this one? Manny has, has been a great addition to this camp. I am honestly very happy that we added him. Uh, we couldn't have chose anyone better, and I, I, I'm very happy being in this camp. When you got into that ninth round, and Mikey went down right off the start, did you feel like you hit him with something big? I mean, what were you thinking when he went down for the last time? So, I, it was a body shot. I knew that he was still hurt from it. You don't recover from body shots that fast. I went straight for it. I didn't hit him that hard, but it was still tender, and that's what put him down. It's been a frustrating... I think that's the perfect way to describe that. Like, it was like a tap. Hearing some of the criticisms of you over the last few months, how much of that did you take into the ring with you tonight? You know, I definitely had a chip on my shoulder. Uh, not necessarily towards the guy in front of me, but... When it's out of your control and people are blaming you for it, you know, it kind of sucks mentally. I try to push it aside. I'm the most optimistic person you'll ever meet. Uh, it still gets to you, but um, we work through it. Uh, I just put it, put it all to the side and just focus on what's important. You are now, at the very least, in position through two sanctioning bodies to be a challenger for a world title. Are you ready for that shot? Yes, sir. We had a guy here again, Terrence Crawford, sitting ringside watching your fight. How do you feel about a matchup right now with Terrence Crawford? Well, first of all, I told you earlier in the week that he's a little tied up right now, but if the opportunity comes, I'm more than happy to fight. Congratulations, Virgil. Thank you. Guys, did you see? So is he, now we're gonna talk about this, um, and, and I apologize for this um, uh, this week for the uh, viewers. Um, normally I have a uh, show on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern. We did do the 6 p.m. show, but basically, um, I've been dealing with some things with this whole weight loss routine I'm going on, you know, and I've been really, really consistent with it. I've took care of a lot of things over the last um, year or so. And now it's finally, you know, time to get my body back, you know, to my peak, you know, as I'm going to be 39 in a few weeks. So basically, I've been needing my rest, you know, um, I'm doing about six miles a day. Cardio. You know, I'm um, lifting and I'm up in the intensity, you know, not a lot, but put it like I've been, you know, I've been dealing with some shit, you know, and then the um, more so the dieting of the uh, the 2,500 calories has been kind of fucking with me a little bit. No, it's not in a bad way, but I feel my body getting used to things. So basically, I've been tired, you know, um, later in the day when I usually do my videos. And I, you know, because I start my days at about 4 or 5 a.m. or so, even before I wasn't working out. So 
you know, it's been, you know, I'm just sharing that with you guys. So I am going to be back on the saddle this week, especially since we have, um, I guess you can say last week with Danny Garcia, Jose Benavidez was kind of like the new season premiere of boxing to where now over the next several weeks, we got some bangers. You know, for example, the fight of this week is the return of uh, Tiafima Lopez. And I think you have Tevin Farmer taking on uh, Mickey Bay this week. Then next week is going to be the return of Adrian Brona versus Omar Figueroa. And then earlier in the day, Usyk versus Joshua too, which looking like is going to be on the zone pay-per-view here in the States. But let's talk about Virgil Ortiz, though. Um, is he officially the WBO mandatory? But the WBO hasn't ordered the fight yet. Is that what I'm getting from that? Also, um, there are some fans that have been saying that, you know, he got sick from. How could I say it? I don't want YouTube to be on my ass. The vaccine. You know, I'm not saying the shit because I'm so confused on what happened and one of my questions for him, oh, let's listen to him. He's um, I'm glad I didn't cut the video off. He's on the zone doing an interview. Yeah, it'll be a, a good scrap. Um, you know, when boxers see a fight, they're, they're not looking. Hey, take your time out. Like the video, subscribe. I'm not doing this for my health. At least you can drop a like, you know? All right. As fans, they're not looking at it to be entertained or whatever. They're looking to learn. I think it'll be a good fight for the fans and the boxers. Well, who do you want right now if you can't get Terrence Crawford? What's the name out there you think is going to give you a big, good fight? I, I honestly don't care. I want to fight everybody as long as uh, they're involved with my path to a world title. I don't care. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, look, you said something to me after your last fight when I asked if you were ready for Terrence Crawford. You basically said, I don't know, maybe, but I want the fight. I want to take the fight right now. I, I like that attitude. I mean, you have hit every marker along the way. You beat the former champion in Maurice Hooker. You beat Agus Kavalaskis, the physical former title challenger. Now you take on the slick boxer. In my mind, you're as ready as you're going to be for a guy like Terrence Crawford. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Sergio, I'll give you the final word. Well, I want to know when are we going to see you again? Because I think the best thing for you to do after a long layoff like this is get right back in there with oh, yeah. anybody if you can't get a big name when are we going to see you back in the ring i would like to fight before the year ends that i want to be as busy as possible um i know i said i'm only 24 but boxing is a is a really short career in in the sport so i want to fight as many times as i can and of course you want to bring it back in texas because you're bringing out the fans and becoming an attraction here so you want to bring it here exactly yeah you know all the fans are die hard here i love uh, fighting here and uh, i look forward to fighting here more all right. Well, good luck to you. Congratulations on your win tonight. Thank you so much. All right. Virgil Ortiz Jr., everybody. I want to thank you so much. So, you know, another frustration of mine is when I was talking about earlier in the video about how, like, we may be in a broadcaster golden age, but we're not in the fighter golden age because, you know, a fight that I would love to see that makes perfect sense. And we would get fights like this back in the day on HBO and on Showtime, like where kind of like the UK does it still. You know, and um, some certain territories with the best, the best of the best, the best of the best of a country have to fight each other before they go on to the next level. For example, you know, we're not going to get Virgil Ortiz versus Boots and then the winner goes on to fight for a world title. You know, and that's fucked up and it's because of promotional shit. And, you know, it's hard and confident to even see um, Boots and, and, and Virgil Ortiz not being the next Spence Crawford. Like, well, fighters are like, you know what? Let's let this marinate. Let's let this marinate. Let's wait. All oh, kind of like, ain't nobody trying to hear that shit no more, you know? And if you really want to think about it, if you want to talk about it, it's taboo to talk about it. But it's starting to get out. These events be losing money. And, and, and if they're not losing money, they're not making the money that they thought the events were going to make. You know, boxing, you know, especially when it comes to the broadcasters, boxing is having an issue with the streaming fans. They, they've been so bad with it. And I'm not saying, you know, fans wasn't going to be streaming anyway, but they make it worse by not putting on quality fights, you know, and putting on too many pay-per-views with the fans like, yo, it's not our fault. The consumer that you pay these fighters more than they can generate to keep them keep them away from other networks and promoters and therefore now you got to put them on pay-per-view to try to break even or make the money back i'm not talking about in the case of virgil ortiz and boots i'm talking about another situation you get where i'm going with this but i like virgil ortiz i like boots in both of them are good but 
They ain't going to be getting Spencer Crawford, you know, no time soon. Or if ever, if you look at this landscape, you know, maybe Boots and Vir and maybe in Boots and Virgil could possibly meet at 154, but they'll probably keep winning. And do you think that, you know, do you believe that uh, it's not going to be no network bullshit mumbo jumbo? It is. Wake up. Like, that's the that's the reality of things. You know, and and for example, do you think that the WBO is going to order Virgil Ortiz versus Terrence Crawford anytime soon? They would have done it already. You think that the WBC, you know, is going to be ordering like and I'm talking about put their foot down and be like, no, like it's going to go to purse bid. Get that. No, it ain't going to happen. You know, maybe we can see boots and maybe a Terrence Crawford under the same management. I still believe. Right. Are they? Cameron Duncan, I don't know, but I don't know. But basically, I'm not trying to get into that. The point I'm trying to make is maybe we can see, you know, maybe these guys at 154, you know, against like it, it's it, and that's a sad time, you know, where you have to try to think about possible scenarios where a guy like Virgil Ortiz, Boots Ennis and Spence and Crawford can all fight each other at some point without it being some network or or the guy saying, oh, you know, they got to do a little bit more. They don't generate, you know, and all that shit. And maybe it's because I haven't eaten and I'm on this fucking twenty five hundred twenty five hundred calorie and it's good for me. It's good for me because T Street, since I'm going to say about 2019, into 2019, I've been indulging. I became a foodie. Um, I got 10 million, almost 11 million views, photo views and review views on Google. I'm in the top 10%. I don't know if this is a good thing, but I'm in the top 10% in the nation of um, restaurant reviewers. No bullshit. So I've been indulging. So now... You know, that I'm finally, you know, like established in life. It's like, all right, bro, you know, time to start taking better care of your body. So I ballooned all the way up from 220 pounds. I'm about six foot three, six foot, yeah, about six, six, two and a half, actually, with my shoes off if you really want to measure it. But six, two, um, I went from 220. I got out the coma after the coma in 2018. I was six, two, 100 and 85 pounds because I had lost so much weight from being in a corner. I'm lost about like 40, 50 pounds or so. You know, um, I think I think it was 60. I don't remember. Well, anyway, then at the end of 2018, 2019, I was at like my ideal weight of 6'2, 220. Now I'm 6'2, 280 pounds. I've lost five pounds just in a week alone. You know, um, about 10 pounds in the last month and about 25 pounds i got all the way up to 305 march february march something like that so anyway i'm keeping this shit up like you know and honestly i feel great you know so i've been you know in the gym every day like you know the last six days you know, well, six of the last seven days. And basically I'm doing a, you know, a progression of a shit ton of cardio, you know, about six, um, six miles or so in increments. So basically I'll do an hour, then chill, then, you know, like do, you know, 30 minutes, then chill, you know, then do 20 minutes, you know, like kind of like a warm up, you know, slow pace. This is not a workout video, but I'm happy to share my, um, my, uh, weight loss because I am keeping, uh, uh, a track of it for anyone wants to know and if you guys have any any tips let me know but i'm launching my podcast it's going to be this week it's my baby i've been working on it for years but the research and everything is done it's about making sure i have the consistency and time to get you know it out there because also i'm involved in some lawsuits not me being sued but me suing other entities and basically i just be busy you know, but at the end of the day, I am self-employed and boxing. I do love boxing and I want to continue to keep doing this. And I will continue to keep doing it. It ain't going to be a Saturday I can see in my life where there's not a major fight going on and I'm not doing a video. But I got ventures. And right now, I'm cons making my life consistently, you know, consistent and, you know, getting into a daily routine with everything. So, therefore, I can be able to give you guys top tier quality boxing content. So stay tuned over the next couple of weeks, um, especially um, as we're going into the fall boxing season. 
where like you know like as, like for those who like even if you listen to the quality of the sound in my videos i'm working on things behind the scenes so i'm trying to get my lighting and everything back because why do i got like this sheen on me you know i don't I don't like the way i look right now like from the camera um like the lighting but uh what else before i go what else marlon esparza i didn't watch that fight yet i fell asleep last night directly after Blair Cobbs was announced the winner against Maurice Hooker. And then I didn't wake up. Like, you know how like you'll go to sleep, you wake up a little bit. And then I woke up with Virgil Ortiz stopping McKinson. He was already celebrated. And then I was, I was back to sleep. So I got up this morning, as you can see, it's a uh, seven Oh six right now. And I watched both of these fights in the, in their entirety and had my little morning routine. And now the gym is open. And I'm um, going to take my ass to the gym. Uh, take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. I will be back on uh, Tuesday. Um, as you can see, it's Sunday right now at 6 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to talk in more detail about um, the recap of the weekend and also the fights of the weekend, um, fights of the upcoming weekend, meaning next week, Tiafima Lopez and all that and um, everything in between going forward. So um, thank you for watching. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. Also down below in the description box is links to my social media, like my Twitter, which is right here. T Street Controversy. Boom. And um, links to the WBC app, powered by the Vive Network. See you guys later. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe.